Hello everyone. In this video I would like to show you some more details on how the effects of nuclear weapons are modeled in the simulation and maybe give you an idea on how you can use it when you're talking about uh, the effects of nuclear weapons. So what you can see here is the map of Paris and the three icons show individuals that we can import into the simulation. Uh, the middle one is me and on top of this map we can display the population density uh, green means a medium population density starting with 20 persons per square kilometer and yellow means a high population density starting with 15,000 persons per square kilometer. The main effects of a nuclear explosion are overpressure, thermal radiation, fallout radiation and prompt radiation. The blue circle shows the radius at which the overpressure will reach 5 psi and at which light residential buildings will collapse. We can also change this value to let's say 1 psi at which the windows will break but let's get it back to 5 psi and the red circle shows the radius at which the thermal radiation will reach 10 calories per square centi centimeter at which exposed persons will uh, typically get a third degree burns and at which uh, mass fires will start if there is enough um, burnable material in the city. The extent of these effects uh, depends uh, first of all on the yield of the bomb, on the size of the bomb. We can change it uh, in this parameter. If we make it bigger of course the radius will grow and it also depends on the height of the explosion. So we can actually set a, an optimum height for to maximize the area affected by the bomb and this is also the reason why uh, the bomb over Hiroshima and Nagasaki were exploded not on the ground but at a specific height to maximize the effect uh, of overpressure on the city. So now let's now let's see what happens when this weapon explodes over Paris. There is a bright flash and now we can calculate the effects on the population. As we can see, um, the, there is almost no population left around the center of the explosion and we can display the casualties density uh, as colors blue and red. Blue means a medium casualties density starting with 20 per square kilometer and red means a very high casualties density starting with 5000 per square kilometer. There are specific curves connecting the physical effects to the fatality rate, uh, which we can see here. Here is the curve for overpressure, saying connecting a specific overpressure to the fatality rate. Let's say at 8.1 uh, psi overpressure, the probability of survival is 50%. And the same uh, is done for thermal radiation and cumulative do dose from the fallout radiation. Uh, if you don't agree with these curves, you can also set them. In principle, the thermal radiation uh, fatality rate should also depend on the yield of the we weapon, however it will be added later. Uh, then there is an average protection factor um, for the fallout radiation, there is a threshold uh, for thermal radiation and population density at which mass fires start. And we can select, select a wind database uh, for one whole year uh, for some specific dates and specific time, um, which will be used to calculate the fallout patterns. Now let's see what happened to me in this event. We can see here. And with this menu, you can import yourself, your family and your friends in the simulation and you can see what will happen to them. So in my case I would experience an overpressure of 2.6 psi, thermal radiation of 15.6 calories per square centimeter and no radiation because there is no fallout in this case because the weapon exploded very high in the air. Uh, and here is a list of expected injuries uh, and the survival probability is zero mainly because I would be in an area affected by mass fires because the population density is high enough so that there is enough burnable material 
and um, the thermal radiation was enough to start fires in this area. We can visualize these fires um, as this red patch. So this area is the area where the thermal radiation was high enough and the population density was high enough to start mass fires. As I said before, there was almost no fallout from the explosion because it was very high in the air where uh, the fireball does not touch the ground and does not produce uh, fallout. So let's reduce the height uh, to where it will produce fallout and let's have it again uh, over Düsseldorf. Now let's calculate the casualties. And we will see that the casualties are not limited to the area around the explosion, but it's instead they extend to a to this elongated area because the wind is blowing the fallout over the settlements. So let's display the radiation from fallout. Uh, the colors show the cumulative dose uh, from the fallout. Red uh, shows fallout uh, radiation uh, over 2000 Röntgen and yellow shows fallout dose of over 100 Röntgen. Uh, the direction and the length of this plume is affected by the wind at this position. So if we have many uh, explosions around this area, the fallout patterns will overlap and we will get a more complex picture. Uh, this also means that if we have only one explosion at a specific area and we calculate the fallout then it will be limited to this area however if we have an uh, area with many targets let's say uh, a missile field which will be attacked by uh, 50 or more warheads then the individual fallout patterns will overlap and will cover a much larger area. At last, let's take a look at how the effects will affect military targets. Let's say here we have some silos uh, with large control centers and the silos will have a specific um, hardness to overpressure. He, in this case over uh, 2000, let's set it to 1000 save it and let's see how it will be affected by the explosions so if we have uh, only about 5 psi at this position nothing will happen because it, because it is hardened against these effects but if we set the displayed radius to 1000 psi and we explode the weapon very close to the target, we will see that it disappears after the flash. So this is how the effects are modeled in the simulation. If you see some inaccuracy in the calculations or if you have suggestions to visualizations, please let me know. Thank you for your attention.